The Xbox 360 is one of the most recognizable gaming consoles out there. Right next to whatever the fuck this thing is. May 12th, 2005, the first day the world ever laid their eyes on this beauty, the Xbox 360. And they revealed it on MTV with a performance by the killers. Alright, that's pretty dope, I'ma be honest. Everyone was hyped, looking forward to playing the next generation of the Xbox. After the success from the first Xbox with Xbox Live and everything, people were excited to say the least. On the day, November 22nd, 2005, arguably the best gaming console was released into the wild for $3.99. No, not $3.99. You had to cough up 400 buckaroos. Or you could just buy the Xbox 360 Core for 100 bucks cheaper, which was a more budgeted, affordable version. Hmm, do I want the white disc tray or the silver for 100 bucks more? But I'd say that price tag is worth it. And I take that back. Yeah, the Xbox 360 had a rocky launch. About one out of every six of the Xboxes sold were plagued with the infamous Red Ring of Death, which is basically an air that scares the shit out of you, making you think that your Xbox is gonna explode. An overheated power supply or broken connectors and components inside the console may be the cause, and the Red Ring is your indicator to send that shit back to Microsoft. This epidemic at the beginning of the Xbox 360's launch caused millions and millions of dollars. Now, that's an understatement. Literally over a billion dollars to iron out this mistake. And that's like the amount of money I make in a year. So you already know that's a little bit of moolah. Microsoft was basically your local Wendy's. You get the shit you're hungry for and it comes out all wrong, so you gotta send it back. Microsoft took a massive blow with the red ring issues. They took back every single defective console and repaired it up like an elf in Santa's workshop. If there was over 90 million Xbox 360 60 sold, then that's at least like three that had the red ring. Microsoft was desperate to do anything to fix the problem. It was their reputation and future on the line. With later releases of the Xbox 360, they made sure this wasn't going to be an issue. Thank God. But the red ring shouldn't go unnoticed. It truly was a sight to see. I remember seeing it with my own two eyes back in like 2010. I don't remember exactly what happened, but I'm pretty sure someone in my house moved the Xbox from being standing up on its side while it was running with a game inside. So you already know what happened from there. Right off the bat, the Xbox 360 had way more features than the original Xbox had. One big noticeable one was the controller being wireless, but the number one thing was it being a powerful beast of a system with a whopping 512 megabytes of RAM. Okay, now that's pretty laughable nowadays, but back then that was a massive upgrade from the original Xbox that only had 64 megabytes. This allowed the Xbox 360 to be way more than just a gaming console. It was a hub for entertainment. You can listen to music, watch movies and TV, play arcade games, create parties to chat online with friends and strangers and so much more so basically you didn't have to go outside to have fun anymore it was all right here achievements were also invented so you could track your progress and accomplishments while you played there were so many ways to personalize your xbox one being the avatars the avatar creator was where i spent a lot of my time you were able to create your own character to represent yourself on your profile or in certain arcade indie titles you were able to play as your avatar in game which was really cool it added another layer of character to your xbox the pop Popular launch titles of the Xbox 360 were Call of Duty 2, Madden 06, and Need for Speed Most Wanted. This console was the birthing place for some of the best video games ever released in history. Hits like Halo 3, Portal, Bioshock, Fallout 3, COD 4, GTA 4, Gears of War, Left 4 Dead, and so much more. This era of gaming was probably the peak of quality games in my opinion. You had so much variety to choose from. RPGs, open worlds, racing, sports, shooters, puzzles, and the list goes on. They also had arcade indie titles in the store that you could buy. I always bought these when I was a kid. They were cheap and affordable and they had hours of fun packed into it. Like Castle Crashers, oh man. Or there was even demos that you can download to get a taste of the game before you bought it. One of the coolest things about the Xbox 360 were the accessories. You could buy chat pads, which were basically mini keyboards you could attach onto your controller to talk shit at a record pace. The Guitar Hero guitars were also super cool. It was an awesome way to incorporate an instrument into a controller. Even if I was trash at those games back in the day, I still felt like a badass. There were also face plates that you could buy for your Xbox and you can swap them out so your Xbox had its own personalized look. In 2010, the next model of the Xbox 360 was released, the Xbox 360S. It was about 17% smaller than the behemoth of the original model. There were also changes to the ports for accessibility and one built for the new feature, the Kinect. November 4th, 2010, the launch of the Kinect. Xbox, pause, pause. This was Microsoft's attempt at competing with the Wii. The Kinect tried to appeal to a family casual audience, 
by completely getting rid of the controller, turning your body into the controller. Genius idea and concept, but in practice, it, yeah, it, it, it didn't turn out so well. To me, Kinect games are more or less just a gimmick. I couldn't see myself spending hours and hours playing them because there wasn't that much depth to each one. They just tried to copy what was already done better on the Wii, that focused entirely on motion controls. The Kinect was cool in some areas, like Kinectimals being like Nintendogs of Xbox. I ate that shit up back in the day. The Kinect's motion controls just wouldn't work that well most of the time. It was hard to even scroll through the menus sometimes. Microsoft really pushed the Kinect to be the future of Xbox. I personally liked the Kinect back in the day. I thought it was cool being able to control the Xbox with something other than a controller, but under the surface, there wasn't that much more to it. I used to have video chats with my online friends and mess around with the body calculation stuff and that was pretty much it. The Kinect was a neat idea, but I'm not sure if it was the right move for Xbox to make at the time. The Xbox 360 slowly fell out of popularity in the later years of its life cycle as the PS3 caught up in sales. Despite releasing a year earlier, the Xbox 360 seemed to be overtaken by the PS3 as time went on. With the release of the slim model of the PS3, aka the model that didn't look like a fucking grill, more people hopped onto the PlayStation train for its hardware and cheap price tag. It was appetizing for a starving broke gamer, and they ate it up. As time went on, Microsoft eventually released the last model of the Xbox 360, the Xbox 360e, released in June 2013. This is the model that I bought with my own money like a real man! It's basically a restyled S model, but more rectangular to be in line with the look of the new Xbox generation, the Xbox One. The similarities are pretty noticeable with the shape and color schemes. To be honest, I think there was no reason to even release this model. The S was perfectly fine, still stayed in line with the look of the original Xbox 360, while the Xbox 360e just looks like a portable stovetop. The Xbox One then released in November of 2013, and then three years later in 2016, the Xbox 360 was officially discontinued in manufacturing. When I heard this news, I was like, damn. And now in the year 2024, Microsoft is taking down the Xbox 360 store, so you'll no longer be able to buy games, DLC, gamer picks, backgrounds, avatars, everything. And this honestly makes me so sad. I know every good thing has to come to an end and a video game console is no exception. It's a fucking video game console. Why am I sad? Well, it's because the Xbox 360 was a catalyst for thousands and thousands of memories of good times. I remember so many times hopping on after school to play with some of my online friends on Halo 3 or Minecraft and stuff, or trying to make the best looking avatar, spending hours and hours scrolling through the pages, trying to find the coolest looking accessories for my dude, or sitting in the media music player, listening to the music, getting sent on a psychedelic journey at eight years old. Even just the sounds of the Xbox 360 are nostalgic. The boot up screen, the menu select sounds, that sound it makes when you start a new party chat. Oh my God. God, that sound sends me right back. The original Xbox was massive in popularity, but the impact of the Xbox 360 in the gaming industry was felt all around. Xbox was officially cemented as a contender for game consoles going forward. Microsoft proved they can be consistent and evolve with the gaming industry as a whole. In 2009, IGN crowned the Xbox 360 to be the sixth best video game console of all time, with a total of 25 on the list. This console was a platform for experiences. It was more than just a console, it was a mass social network. With nearly everyone having Xbox Live, the popular games at the time, and maybe some pizza downstairs? This was a recipe for good times. People made friends and enemies. Keep my information, I'm a grown man. You sent me a message first, yeah? I live in Smevic, Birmingham. If you want the fucking brawl, come down to Smevic, ask for Danny G. I'll come out of my house and I'll break your fucking legs, you little prick. You know what I'm it sure was a time to be gaming, that's for sure. There was an experience for everyone involved. If you wanted to shit talk on Call of Duty, you could. If you wanted to chill on a Friday night with some buddies and play some Guitar Hero with those massive plastic guitars, you could. Or if you wanted to chill and play arcade indie games, you could do that as well. If you didn't want to play anything, you could always just hop in a party chat with some buddies and relax for the night. It was so versatile, it had everything to offer, and that's what made the Xbox 360 such a great console at the time and even still today. I love the Xbox 360 and I still play it sometimes just for that kick of nostalgia. Overall, the Xbox 360 had a massive impact on the gaming industry. And honestly, I think it's safe to say that it still does because everyone's still talking about it because of how good of a console it was. With the consistent flow of great exclusives rolling out and awesome experiences to be had, the Xbox 360 was a perfect console for your average gamer. And guess what? I'm an average gamer.